in this video I wanted to provide some intuition as to why there is this finite sample bias in instrumental variables estimators. So the idea is that we have, as we always do, some relationship between y and x, but x we are also seeing as being dependent on z or being determined by z and some other term u which captures all the other variants in x. And we know that in finite samples that beta hat iv or the expectation of beta hat iv in general does not equal beta. Even in the circumstances where we have a covariance of z and epsilon which is equal to zero. And by covariance here I mean a population covariance between z and epsilon which equals zero. So I wanted to provide some intuition as to why this is. Well, if we knew the population parameter delta, so this sort of term here in our sort of first stage regression, then we can actually produce an estimate of x, which I'm going to write x tilde, which would just be equal to delta times z. And then if we were to use that in our regression, so then we'd have y is equal to alpha plus beta x tilde plus epsilon, because we know delta exactly and because u is completely uncorrelated with z by definition, we then know that there is going to be no correlation between x tilde and epsilon because of the fact that this x tilde contains none of u and the bias in least squares is coming about because of the covariance between u and epsilon. But the problem in reality is that we don't actually know this population parameter delta, so we have to estimate that. And when we estimate that in our first day progression, we get a value of delta hat, which in general doesn't equal delta because of sampling error. And because of that, we have in general that x hat, our sort of practical estimators for x, which we get from our first stage regression, don't equal x tilde, which are those values which we would get if we knew delta exactly. And the difference between these two things is due to sampling error. And you can think about this sampling error as being composed of two sort of separate sampling error problems. So one of the reasons that these two aren't equal is because of the fact that there is some sampling error in u. And there is also some sampling error in z. And because of this sampling error, we can think about x hat as being a function mostly of z because it's equal to delta hat times z. So it's a really sort of mainly a function of z. But because of this sampling error in u, we can also write that x hat is a sort of smaller or lesserly, lesserly it is determined by u. So let me just repeat that. x hat is mainly determined by z, but it also has a little bit of dependence on u. So then when we run our second stage regression, which is y is equal to alpha plus beta x hat plus epsilon, because there is this finite sample dependent on u, there is some covariance between x hat and epsilon because we know from our least squares problem to begin with that the covariance of epsilon and u equals zero, or doesn't equal zero rather. But notice that as our sample size gets bigger and bigger, this dependence on u gets smaller and smaller and smaller because sampling error isn't actually a problem anymore until at the sort of limit when our popula population size or our sample size is equal to our population size, we then have that x hat is only determined by z. So in those circumstances, this sort of covariance between x hat and epsilon actually disappears. So we have asymptotic unbiasedness of IV estimators.